All right, everybody, in this video, I'm going to explain generator expressions in Python. A generator expression, it's similar to a list comprehension. We use a set of parentheses rather than a set of straight brackets. A generator expression, it creates a generator. They're iterable. They yield values one at a time. And by using a generator expression, there's no need to define a function or use yield. However, they're less flexible than generator functions, and they can only be used once. They're not reusable. Basically, you follow this formula. It's very similar to a list comprehension. Within a set of parentheses, you have some expression for every value in an iterable. In the last video, we've created a generator function that counts up to a certain number. It yields values one at a time, rather than dumping all the values at once, like a normal function with return. Yield pauses the function, returns a value, then continues the function again. We're going to recreate a similar program but use a generator expression instead. Here's how. I'm going to delete this function. We'll accept some user input, which I will name number. We're counting up to a certain number. We'll need some input. Input, enter a number to count up to. Then we will typecast this as an integer, because normally user input is a string. All right, now we'll write a generator expression. A generator expression it returns an object. The object is iterable, so you can use it in a for loop. With our object name, let's name it counter. Counter equals a generator expression. You need a set of parentheses. The formula is similar to a list comprehension. Expression for value in iterable. To best explain this, we'll start with the for loop portion. For every value, for our loop variable, Let's name it count for every count in, then we need something iterable. We can use the range function. That's an option for the range of numbers between one comma, our number, our user input, but we'll add plus one because this argument is exclusive, not inclusive. So if we need to count to 10, the range of numbers will be one comma 11 exclusive. Now we do need an expression we can take our loop variable and do stuff with it before assigning it. We're not going to do anything with it. We'll just rewrite count for the expression. So altogether, count for count in, then use the range function. And this should work. So this is our generator expression. It's assigning an object. The object is iterable, so we can use it in a loop. For every number, um, but it looks like I already have a number variable. Let's rename this to something else. We'll just say n, n for short. For every n number in our counter, we will print each number of n. Let's test it. Enter a number to count up to. Let's count up to 10. There we go, one through 10. All right, now I'm going to count up to something ridiculous like a kajillion. And we're getting each value one at a time, but this is going to take forever. So I'm going to terminate this program. But we know that it works with our generator expression. There is no need to define a function or use yield. However, a generator expression is less flexible with its logic because within a function, you can write some really complex stuff and these aren't reusable. They're not within a function, so we can't call them repeatedly. Another great place to use a generator expression is when reading a file. Here's how we can do that. So on my desktop in the previous video, we've created a test file that contains some sample text. I'm going to copy this file location, right click, go to properties, copy this location. We'll need it. We will create a file path variable equal to within a string, paste that file path, include the file name and the extension. And we'll need to use double backslashes. There we go. All right. When opening and closing files, we'll want to use a with block. With, call the open function, then you can pass in that file path. As file, the as keyword it assigns a resource as a variable name, the file that we're opening. The with block will handle opening and closing any resources. Now, normally with the generator expression, 
it won't close any resources such as files automatically. That's why we're putting it within a width block. Now we need to write a generator expression. We'll say lines. Lines will be an object, the object that's returned to us via a generator expression. We need a set of parentheses and then follow this formula. Expression for value in iterable. But I like to start with the for loop portion first. For every line in my iterable of file, my file is an iterable. Then we'll need an expression. What do we want to do with each line? I'm going to return each line. But we could write something more complex if we need to. For example, follow this with strip. This will strip any unnecessary white space. So that's our generator expression. We could use the object return to us in the loop. For every line in my object of lines, we will print each line. And let's see if this works, which it does. Here are the contents of that text file. All right, here's a challenge round. Within your generator expression, you can add an if condition. If condition. We'll create a range of numbers and square all of them with a generator expression. We'll accept some user input. Number equals accept some user input. Enter a number to square up two. Then typecast this as an integer. We'll write a generator expression. It returns an object. This object will be squares. Then we'll write a generator expression for every value in iterable. We'll start with that portion. For every Let's say for every x in my range of 1, comma, our number plus 1. Then the expression. We will take x, then square it. x to the power of 2. And then we can print our squares. For every square in squares, print each square. Let's run it. Enter a number to square up to. Let's find all squares up to 10. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 is 16, so on and so forth to 10. 10 squared is 100. Now we'll add an if condition. After the iterable, you can add an if condition. Let's return a value only if x is even. To check to see if a number is even, you can write the following code. If x modulus 2. Modulus gives you the remainder of any division. If x is odd, modulus 2, it returns 1. If it's even, it returns 0. So if x modulus 2 equals 0, that means x is even in this case. Let's change the name of the object returned to us. We'll name this even squares. It only holds the squares of even numbers. Let's test that again. Enter a number to square up to 10. 2 squared, 4 squared, 6 squared, 8 squared, 10 squared. So with a generator expression, you can add an if condition too. All right, everybody, so those are generator expressions. They're similar to a list comprehension. They create a generator that yields values one at a time. And well, everybody, those are generator expressions in Python.